Super Hits. 104.9 WAXI. Rockville, Clinton. since they went at it. 
and be into our new building with all of our new ambulances and equipment in use. That'll be, um, that will take us a year from the fire that's <laughs> taken to get back to where we needed to be. But there's finally light at the end of the tunnel. Um, so I do have one employee off on FMLA. He is a supervisor. Um, we're hoping to hear, it won't be until probably the first week of January, what's kind of going on and what term we're looking at um, as far as <coughs> needing to be off, but that should not affect our budget any through the end of the year because we're covering our part time and we're still there. That's all I have. All good news. It is good news after, very much so, after the fire, why? Takes time to get it back, but. I'll still be dealing with the piles of insurance stuff for a good while, but at least we'll be fully functioning as normal a year from the date of the fire. That's great. Good deal. Cindy? I was just going to share if uh, any of you are interested. I went to a workshop um, that Baker Tilly put on on the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, so they do a nice little uh, breakdown of all of those things and where the funding sources are going to uh, be going and, and so on and so forth. So if anybody's interested, I have copies that I can email you. Just let me know. Yeah, it's really interesting. Oh, well, anybody that has the nerve to call one of them bills out of Washington, the Inflation Reduction Act is, anyway, that's what's funny about that. Okay, Commissioner Mace? A um, few things. Um, we, all, all the projects uh, are now completed um, as far as the uh, resonator furnaces at the jail, the water system at the jail, fire annunciation system here uh, at the courthouse. Uh, John was uh, present. We tested that system the other day. Uh, so we had the courthouse closed from noon to one o'clock on a Friday to uh, test that about an 80 decibel system. It's <coughs> pretty loud and obnoxious. It all worked fine. Then John and I went out to the jail. Um, Matt Steckley uh, had become aware of a problem once they had brought that system with the new flush valves online. Um, some of the um, and correct me if I get wrong here when I'm telling you this uh, that uh, some of them were, were leaking. They, they wouldn't shut off completely. And what I understand, then once they gone back and, and worked on it, discovering what that problem was, was they blew some seals when they pressurized the system, Correct. and they have got the parts in now, so that's going to be, uh, should be taken care of this way. There was some low water water pressure too as well, wasn't there, or something, or was, was it just air in the lines, or what did they that? They got an airlock. Oh, they had an airlock. Well, yeah. when Mies and I looked at it, we thought that it looked really cloudy, and it looked like it had a bunch of air in it. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's some valves that they blew out too, but those came in. So you're satisfied that it's... Yeah, I mean, yeah, they should get it fixed soon, but that was quite a tour, quite a place to visit. It's good to visit the once in a while, knowing you can go home when you want to, so it's not a, not a bad thing. And the, the fire initiation system worked great, and of course in that process of going up in, in the uh, attic to look about the system, what they have, John and I observed again just all of the, the piles and boxes and piles of paper. We don't really even know what the weight limit is up there, it's just literally tons of stuff and so we've looked over the years for some way to alleviate that problem. Uh, we have possibly an opportunity coming up in town where we're just beginning to stage of looking into that by getting an appraisal on that opportunity. So once we get some numbers back we'll let you know what we got and what it looks like and even if it's a feasible thing. We just don't know yet. Another thing we're looking at to see if it's feasible we just don't know yet uh, was to uh, alleviate the problems um, for the sewage in Marshall and Bloomingdale which we've been looking at for about 20 years now. Um, a new opportunity exists with USDA, so we're just in the very early stages of that. Uh, the Indiana Financial Authority is paying the uh, 30000 of this uh, preliminary engineering report. Uh, ARP funds are going to pay for the five. We thought it would be ten, but it's only going to be 5000 more needed. So we'll um, get that paperwork taken care of and get that uh, preliminary engineering report and just see what the options are for those folks. Uh, um, you just don't think about those little towns being locked in every every house has its own septic system and uh, you couldn't do that today there's not enough lot space to put a septic system in so if their septic system fails and there's no other option to hook up to their house will just become worthless because nobody's going to buy that house without a septic system and you can't repair it you could always put a tank in and have it pumped every week i suppose if you had to do that but i can't imagine every little t thing putting a tank in their backyard and back uh, and having done that so we are in the process of working that i think it's going to be uh, Fruitful, but we'll, we just don't know. We just don't know until we get a chance to look at that. 
Uh, commissioners have called an executive session for Friday. Uh, if you read that in the paper, I just want you to know there's no issues, no problems. We just need some clarification on some uh, some insurance issues and uh, how, how we go about what the options are with, uh, with an employee. So no one's in trouble. There's not uh, any issue, no difficulties. We just need clarification, but it does involve HIPAA things, so it can't be out in an open public meeting. We have to do that in the next session. And um, I think that's all I got. Now, insurance renewal is in process now, getting that done. This should be pretty well completed. I think all the departments have had their meetings. Uh, they've been given uh, sign-up sheets to, to go forward. The uh, only question I had from anybody on that uh, was on the uh, spousal carve-out and how that works. Just to make sure everybody understands what spousal carve-out means in the insurance. doesn't mean your spouse can't get insurance. It means if your spouse is, is employed someplace else and has access to insurance through the other employer, then they are ineligible to be on our plan, and all, all industries do that. So, uh, otherwise, say that uh, uh, John had a, had a company, and I and and I was representing Park County, and John uh, hired uh, uh, Rick to go work for him. Uh, Rick could get on, uh, on on John's plan, but John's not going to pay for his wife because his wife's working for the county, so she's going to have to get where she is employed, and he and he'd have to get where he's employed. So that's all that spouse or carve out is is saying that if your spouse has access, availability for insurance at their place of employment, then they are ineligible to be on our plan to do that. The kids of the family can go either way, whichever plan they want to go on. So it doesn't affect them at all. It's just that the spouse works and has opportunity to get on the insurance plan at her employer's, that's where she'll be required, he will be required to do. It's not ever come up as being a problem. Oh, as you said, it's kind of standard now. Always. Everybody does. There's, everybody. there's no reason why one company would pay the benefits of the other company. That's what it would come down to if they didn't, didn't do that type of thing. So, yeah. It's been around for a long time. Okay. Anything for us? Mm, not that I know of. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Sheriff? You got the U.S. here in commissary. Report. There's one for Jim. They have some of my wins still. Okay, we'll Do you realize this is Judge Cole's last? I mean, Judge Cole. Cole. <laughs> Sheriff Cole. <laughs> Sheriff Cole's last you. meeting, last council meeting, is Sheriff. I, I wait, we're aware of that. I was gonna gonna come to that whenever he's done with his report. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good day. He gets a good day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well. Hmm. I'll have to revise my remarks. <laughs> Go right ahead, Sheriff. Um. We started out here 155000 and change for commissary. Bought two Tahoes, I don't know, it's in there roughly 84, 85000 but we're setting at $50,000 right now. And then the plan is still to buy another Tahoe next year. Um, there's two ordered. They could come in February, I just haven't checked, but. The funds will be there for it. We generate enough that it's not going to be an issue. So uh, and then, uh, over the last eight years, we've generated basically $2 million for housing out of county and DOC inmates. Um, it would have been more, but the last couple of years with COVID, we cut down on doing that. But we're back up. There's 15 out of county and DOC inmates now, so we've been doing that the last few months. I think since September, so we're starting to pick out back up. Um, you get on the water to jail, and basically, uh, with a lot of projects going on, the jail's in pretty good shape. And the department is too, so should be a smooth transition come January and. should be set. So. See, most sheriffs, they don't leave the, the incoming sheriff with much in the commons there. Say, you know, leave much in there. Most of the time they spend that down for the next sheriff, and then they spend the next first couple of years trying to build it back up. So, you know, you've, you've left him pretty good, pretty well said. Well, we were at a new sheriff's school for, well, I was there for two days, but he's there all week, and I had your vendor expo last night, so... When I was going on a shopping spree last night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how to do it. That's how to do it. But so yeah, he, he should be in good shape. So. Good, good. Well, we did want to take this opportunity to, to thank you for your service for the last eight years. Um, you know, it, 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 you've certainly grown into the job, and, and I personally think you'll be, you'll be remembered as one of the best sheriffs we've ever had. And 
you understand it, I think, better than most that I've dealt with in my tenure on a, as a council is that the funding and, and those sort of things. And uh, you've been great to work with. And while maybe all of us always have always agreed why we certainly understand where each other's coming and respect each other's uh, uh, roles that we all have and we appreciate your service uh, to the county and it's been a pleasure to serve with you and wish you the best of luck it's not like you're going away yeah. but uh, hopefully maybe in a few years we'll see you back in the role again That's and awesome. uh, we uh, we appreciate that and I'll open it up if any of the rest of you want to say anything but we we do appreciate you and uh, uh, you've been great to work with and uh, that you know, answer the questions and uh, those sort of things and uh, thank I you I tried it. and it's been it's been a pleasure so, <clears throat> so. And I think you've left it better than you found it and that's always the role yeah. any of us really have is to try to leave something better than you found it and you've done that <clears throat> you've done that um, I the rest of what John said I couldn't agree with you uh, done a great job it's been a pleasure working with you we've come a long way <laughs> I'm a long way from the beginning in the first budget hearing or second budget hearing or whatever, but uh, you know it's been a pleasure and we'll we'll see you around still. You still won't be around. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, Chad, I assume you're here for the RMC. You're welcome to say anything as far as the public comment, but I assume that's why you're here, so I'm good, thank you. Okay. All right. So I think I covered everybody, so we'll move on to the Regular business then. We did we did pass around the minutes. That... Yeah, we did. Okay. Um, so the November tenth minutes. Uh, the uh, Michelle had uh, sent them to me. I reviewed them. We made some corrections. Uh, I would make a motion to approve the minutes as presented today. Sorry. Both been made and second to approve the minutes all in favor. Aye. Aye. Uh, additional appropriations. Uh, <coughs> these are these are the additional appropriations. Uh, the first local health emergency preparedness. I know some of us talked about this particular couple of additionals. This is for the emergency preparedness grant that has never been appropriated. Um, and has been being paid out. Um, it is not appropriated for next year, and the health uh, board, the health department uh, board, will deal with what they're going to do with that grant uh, before we will make any further appropriation to it. Uh, so the amounts that are listed for that, is my understanding, should be uh, enough to cover calendar year 2022 for the balance of it. Uh, the Third additional is for Sheriff Narcotics from the Forfeited Asset Fund so that the uh, Sheriff's Department can utilize those funds in their investigations of uh, illicit activities, I think is the way I'll say that. So uh, that's what we have in front of us. Anybody have any questions on those? <clears throat> Some of it. Second. Most been made and second to approve the additionals. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we have quite the litany of transfers. It's that time of year. Was yeah. So one one tries, to, tries to finish out the year. So I won't talk about them all individually, but we have several for park and rec. Uh, a couple, pay, one payroll, one, uh, one to utilities. Uh, a couple to utilities, excuse me. Uh, the recorder has one from office supplies to travel. Uh, Julie sent hers in for a couple for vehicle maintenance and a small two cent transfer <laughs> to balance out a the bridge festival overtime line. Uh, I'm glad we're keeping track of that two cents. I appreciate that. Absolutely. I, yeah. Uh, the clerk's office uh, payroll transfer for deputy lines. Uh, uh, if Henry, if I get this wrong, you feel free to chime in. But uh, when uh, he replaced a deputy, the second deputy position, quicker than you know, by the time he paid out the initial or the one who left uh, to get uh, 
so therefore it would be short in that line. That's correct, yeah. right? Uh, a couple uh, election board ones here um, to kind of balance all that out. We had already talked about that earlier in the year to some extent, um, that there would be some movement in there. So there's four for that fund. And then the auditor has a, a payroll transfer to pay out the outgoing first deputy's vacation since she will move to an elected position. That's it. Okay, questions? We would approve the transfers. Second. Motion been made and second to approve the transfers. All in favor? Uh, Aye. <coughs> Okay, we're going to reappropriations. Okay, so uh, if either to the two of you, uh, if I get any of this wrong, um, please chime in as well, I basically got my information from you. So um, uh, the first one on here is a Union Hospital Compliance Program. So we have a deal with Union Hospital Clinton that some of our deputies will provide security down there. And we pay them from their payroll or from a, a line in, in our uh, ledger and then Union Hospital Clinton pays the county back for that. So uh, in that particular situation what we have in front of us is uh, a check of three hundred and two dollars and twenty four cents that will be would be needing to be reappropriated to the line of one thousand nineteen oh one eleven twenty eight in the amount of two hundred and eighty dollars so that is the amount to go into that line um, so what you have on your agenda is not an applicable account code um, but it should end in eleven twenty eight. And then the Social Security line, which obviously we would collect that part as well. Uh, there's $22.24 to go into 1,015.01.2100. Okay, so there is uh, that reappropriation. And back above it is Park and Rec. Uh, I talked to Chris about this uh, just a little bit ago. Um, it's uh, an overpayment to uh, this OTC brand. Uh, company so basically we paid them too much they sent a check back for what we overpaid and so therefore he's asking for it to be reappropriated in the lines that it was taken out of because this is his concession fund and, and I have looked up the fund to see where it stands so it, it may be in the red for all I know but um, or some lines may be in the red but that's where he's asking for it's it's a legitimate attempt to reappropriate so is that you guys? Sorry. There's actually another one that needs to be done for Union Hospital, but we don't have a breakdown on it. Uh, yeah, there's another one. Wanted to meet the end of the month anyway. We'll just deal with it on the 29th. If we just put it, make a note to present it then, so that we can, because I think we're pretty sure have to do that meeting. So we'll yeah. just deal with it then. That's what that meeting's for. So that's fine. Okay, any questions on the reappropriations? Motion approved. Second. Motion been made and seconded to reappropriate funds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Pay the jury. <coughs> Make a motion to pay the jury. Second. Motion been made and seconded to pay the jury. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have no reduction of funds. Committee reports. The RDC has not met since we last met, but we will meet tonight to consider uh, to whatever do whatever we have to do for this uh, IFA agreement with the sewer project that Commissioner Meese talked about. So we're going to have a special meeting tonight to deal with that. Just basically to have something in the minutes that yes. we approve it. Exactly. It's not yep. any more than that. Yep. There's no amount to anything. Yep. No no on anything. Yep. Okay, planning and zoning. Didn't meet. Courthouse security did not meet. New business. <clears throat> okay, so I don't know what ordinance 2022-16 has to do with anything, or, but I will deal with resolution 2022-11. Uh, if you'll recall in the last meeting, uh, Director O'Brien informed us that we would need to do uh, uh, 
move some money over to the uh, highway generator grant fund. Uh, he would not have all the funding in by the end of the year. So uh, in front of you is resolution number 2022-11 to accomplish that. It's a transfer, an interfund transfer, the amount of $5,900 from the county cover bridge fund to the highway generator emergency management grant fund. Um, so this will uh, seed that fund uh, with $5,900 for six months. Um, we've done these obviously in the past. Um, so that will take care of that problem. Okay, uh, any questions on that? Do we approve resolution 2022-11? Second. Motion been made and second to approve the resolution. All in favor? Aye. So. Yeah, in your uh, while we've got a man here in your packet, there's a proposed meeting schedule for 23. We don't adopt the schedule until January, but it's in there for you to look over if anybody has any um, questions. Also, in your packet is just the council appointments. Again, we'll deal with that in January, but it's there for you to look over uh, between now and the, now and then and see if you have. Uh, concerns or questions and there'll be a few moves to change a few things around so that's in your packet for your information only. <coughs> Thank you Roy for doing that. So well. okay. So ready for RMC? Old business. So as you recall last month why Chad uh, Jenkins on behalf of the RMC was here and they are investing around seven point, and if I get any of this wrong, feel free to jump in and correct me. Um, around 7.1 million or so uh, in a new uh, facility out at what I'll call the Swing Crossroads east of Rockville. Um, Chad has indicated that they will be building regardless of whether or not they receive the abatement or not. Uh, best we can calculate, and this is using basically the most available tax rates, so it's not exact. If we were to grant a 10-year abatement, it would be 626000 A five-year abatement would be 341000 The offer is two jobs in some sort of service type area, whether that be tree trimming or line person or something. Is that fair? Correct. Okay. So last month we listened to all that. We took no action. Um, the next step, if you're so inclined, is we have we would have to designate um, the area or the parcels that they're using um, and um, economic uh, revitalization area. Is that correct, Cindy? So far, so good. So it's now up to you to whether or not you want to adopt that adopt that resolution. If we do, if you do adopt, then then we will need to decide then some sort of what the abatement is to be. Your options are many. You can grant a 10 year, you can grant 10 or less, um, you can even put some limits on the value, isn't that right? They can even put a Yeah, value. you can you know, abate a portion of abate it. Abate a portion know. of it, there are many options, but really the question for you right now is... The only thing you can't do is make it longer than 10, if I remember right. No, that's the, that's the maximum. So you need to decide whether or not you're willing to adopt the revitalization or designate that or economic revitalization area. There you are. <clears throat> so we can discuss. It's all open now. I just want to go over that. So it's up to you all. I would like to support them in some way. For what they do for us, Rock County. <clears throat> well, we talked at length about this in our last meeting, but not nearly at the length we did in, in uh, redevelopment. Um, I have certainly been supportive of abating in the, in these scenarios, in scenarios that are going to bring economic development to our, to our community. It is one of the 
one of the few tools that we have to to lure investment. Um, and you know, you can argue whether or not they're used appropriately, used too much, too little, whatever. I don't know what the answer to any of that really is. But what I do know is is that I've supported them generally in the past. Um, we've had some time to digest this. Um, John and I have had longer to digest it because we're on redevelopment too. Um, so, uh, and it's been, you know, there's been a little bit in the paper about it, uh, about it happening and, and so on. Um, I have not found a tremendous groundswell of support for it. Honestly, uh, I've found essentially very little. Um, it's not lowering investment. Uh, I won't go into all the reasons, it's not necessary here, but I have not found uh, a lot of support for uh, abating this project. Um, in the abatements that we have done, I've, I've never run into that as an issue. Um, there are a certain measure of individuals across the country that are in this county or anywhere else that are opposed to abatements because they, they think that it's uh, you know, giving money to somebody on the backs of somebody else. Um, and there's, I suppose you could make an argument to that, but my argument has always been that if you, if you don't abate something and you lose that investment, then it's 100% abatement perpetuity because you never did get the investment. Um, so with that being said, uh, like I said, I've been very supportive of these generally, but I have not found this to be a very uh, publicly supported project uh, or abatement in front of us. So. Uh, I will uh, not be supporting the resolution. Okay, so I'm seeing the rest of you, or how you want to? Well, I've had some comment, and I'm with Roy, but uh, I've found very little support. The problem seems to be that they pay taxes where they're at now, they don't want to pay taxes where they're going. And we're going to lose that tax base because the town's going to buy it. Uh, as far as financing it, there's other methods they're using other than this tax abatement. And the promise of two jobs, quite frankly, was, uh, well, I just wasn't very much. And then I was also told that maybe if we cut it back, and the first answer was, well, if we don't get full, we'll go one job. So that tells me that jobs are bargaining chips. They're not really for expansion. And that, uh, that I didn't care for. So, no, I will not be supporting the resolution. Cameron or Rick, or you want to say anything? You don't have to. It's just, it's. I haven't had anybody that, that thought it was a good idea, you know, because there's, there's a big part of our county that doesn't have RMC. You know, time you take out Rockville, Montezuma, Rosedale. Duke's up in the other end. It's not fair to take all that away from all the other county when the, it's not going to be anything to them. Plus, they serve a lot of other counties that they're not going to be kicking in anything on it. We're going to be losing the money and everybody else is going to be out. So, I disagree with it. I have to stand with the other three. It's all about want versus need for me. This is a project that was wanted not necessarily a project that was needed, or at least that hasn't been articulated as such. But I'm a hard no. Okay, well, having heard that, and you're welcome to make a motion, Larry, if you'd like. But I would. Okay, go ahead. I would want approval of their request. Okay. Is there a second? <clears throat> no second. Motion fails for lack of a second. Okay, moving on. Uh, salary ordinance. Do we ever publish that, or does that, isn't that required to be? Not published? the first. Not the first adoption. We don't have to do change. that. Just the changes. Yes, okay. Just changes. I want to check on that. No, the first adoption is not required to be uh, published. But if we make any adjustments to it whatsoever, we have to. Okay. All right. Well, I want to check on that. <coughs> Um, I have a couple updates, or one update at least. I talked to uh, the county attorney this morning, or we exchanged messages about the bond filing. He has uh, received approval from the commissioners, and, and they're meeting 
since ours uh, to move forward with the bond filing on the auditor's bond for the overpayment salaries, and that will uh, that he has uh, assured me he will get that filing done uh, today. Um, <clears throat> the next thing I wanted to just put out there is that, uh, of course, getting time for encumbrances. Uh, two department heads have already sent some encumbrances over. I will put out some information on on requesting encumbrances in the near future. I was at least waiting through the last claim cycle and then take time to sit down and actually do it. So uh, we will send that information out and start requesting the encumbrances come in uh, that we will intend, the council will intend to adopt or to uh, approve encumbrances in our <coughs> February, scheduled February meeting. Uh, so look for that coming out uh, in the near future. Um, I will kind of handle that at this time for uh, the new auditor and her staff uh, just to help them get on their get their feet on the ground. So I'll, I'll kind of take along take that one this time. Um, and I last thing last thing I would like to to make sure everybody in the room knows that uh, today is the assessor's birthday. So happy oh, birthday, oh, Madam oh, Assessor. Thirty nine again, huh? <laughs> Mm, and not a gray Happy hair. <laughs> uh, a couple housekeeping things. Uh, we will, it sounds like we will be having a council meeting on the 29th of December just to wrap things up. 9 a.m. in this building. Uh, maybe the newspaper could help us out with the advertising, if you would please, that, that we will be meeting here. It will be very brief, and it will be just to finish up your end. Uh, those year in matters that may come before us. Uh, the swearing in, the judges notified me the swearing in ceremony for new elected officials is December 27th at 3 p.m. in the courtroom for those that need, need, uh, need that. So he set that the other day at 3 p.m. December 27th in the courtroom. So that is taken care of. Uh, I want to Make a few comments where Larry Gambiani has uh, been here with us for how many how many years now or how, how many terms? I forgot. Twenty. Twenty years. Twenty years. Wow. Um, Jim, we came together. We came in together. Yeah, he's one I brought too, so keep that in mind. I, I brought that too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Lord knows if there's credit, while well, you'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's been a pleasure, Larry. The the last twenty. I didn't realize it's been twenty, but I'm, I'm glad to know that. Uh, these last 20 years, you, we could always count on you for a kind thought or a kind word or uh, to advise me uh, privately when I needed it. And uh, so we appreciate you and uh, we uh, think a lot of you, uh, other than maybe your, your support of, of that Red Nation down south and a few <laughs> other things that I could improve on. Uh, uh, I was looking at something last night, and I don't know, you may not remember this. I took me a little bit to find it, but uh, this is a gift that Larry gave to me some years ago when I was on the school board and he was a superintendent, and I'll read this to you. This is Larry's uh, note to me, and uh, he said, uh, my special gift to John Pratt, the infamous, and it's in quotes, all-weather track, which Larry was always a, a, an advocate of, this is as close as I ever got, and this is a little sample of the all-weather track. And so I <laughs> thought I would remind you of that. I don't know if you remembered that or not. Oh, I do. I do. If you remember that or not. But I, it's one of those things you keep, you know, and I think, wow. and I'm going to hang on to that. Because uh, he left that for me, and Madge Myers passed it along to me. Is and that right? Madge, yeah, Madge gave it. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's one of many. So we started house. out as, as me a, be a freshman on the school board, and you as the superintendent, and we... You were there for a little while, and then you moved on, and so. Uh, but it's been great, and we'll open it up uh, for anybody. We also have something for you. I'll take care of that at the end, but we'll let the rest of us comments. And so, floor is open. Yeah, well, I served with with you on the, on the reorganization committee. It's the first time you and I really, really got to work together, and you were, as John stated here, you were a voice of. Of calm and reason and wisdom, when I, as chairman of that that group, would occasionally get maybe a little bit ahead of myself or, or out of line, and uh, uh, 
So it was always very much appreciated to have have you there to kind of reel us back in, uh, particularly myself back in from time to time. And that's continued on here in our service together in my eight years is that uh, uh, you could always count on, as as John said, and, and you know, a kind word from Larry on something that has been sent out or something that we've done or an update that's been sent along. That You'd always count on Larry to, to chime in, uh, you know, something positive about it. You could also always count on him that if you needed to uh, clip every once in a while or something, he'd, he'd do it, but he'd, he'd do it privately and, and make sure that you knew it, knew where you needed to be, but uh, you know, nobody else necessarily knew it. And it's always been much appreciated, the friendship, uh, working together, um, and serving together with you, Larry, and uh, wish you nothing but the, but the best uh, as you move along here. Um, and uh, I would simply, I guess, close that up with thank you for your service and everything that you've done. Uh, My pleasure. You want me to uh, reveal both our ages? <laughs> it's been 55 years. Well, what can I say what Park County's meant to me and Helen? You know, I, I, it was a dream for me to be able to come and teach and be a football coach here. That was a dream. I never, never in my wildest dream think I would be still here today at 81 years old. <laughs> um, Park County's been everything in the world to her and I and our kids. Uh, I just can't, can't thank them enough. Um, I was hoping to run again, but uh, the beautiful blonde that I married many years ago, uh, along with my own family, uh, met and said to me, uh, you will not run again. Do <laughs> you understand that? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm not, an, I'm not a genius, but I hope I'm not an idiot. And so I didn't run. So I, I, uh, I guess that's a good time. 81 years old, came here 20, 22 years old. I uh, hope I got a lot of number of days still left to live with all of you in what I consider to be um, a wonderful, wonderful county. I really do. I've spread this word in my work at Indianapolis and everything else and what it offers, and I truly believe it. I really do. Um, I can't say the same for Vermillion County, where I grew up in Little Blanford, Indiana. But um, I've always respected and, and touted the people of Park County, because I really believe that really believe we're a unique county for, for what we offer, for people and our kids and everything else. So I hope I'm running a long time with this, and uh, thanks for everything. Well, we're glad you crossed the river. Yeah, yeah. you was in the wrong school for me, but you was always a good help with the school buses. That's what we can get her. Yeah. I too was a kid in high school when, when you were uh, coaching, when you were here in uh, Rockville, and had your wife, but she had me, I guess I should say, uh, in uh, Spanish class in high school, even that's a long time ago. I just want to say, uh, you may not realize, although I know people tell you all the time, but all of us are out in the community every day, talk to people every day. I know of no instance in my long life of any pair, any two people, that have held the, the affection of the whole, entire community for you and Helen. So you are deeply, deeply appreciated. Thank you. We hope we're around a long time. Me too. We have our challenges, but uh, we're going to hang in there. And I really do appreciate John's leadership and all of my colleagues on the board. Uh, uh, it's a special place. And I've always felt that way all these years, and I'll go to my grave, I think, feeling that way. And I loved coaching this yeah. guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, John, very yeah, much. Yeah, you could with me. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as a token of our appreciation for you and Helen, uh, the council went together and we purchased you a gift card from Jerry's Thank in Clinton. You. Knowing yeah. of your yeah. Italian heritage, we thought Jerry's <laughs> would be appropriate yes. for you. So Absolutely. we have this for you and a, and a card and a, and a note uh, from us. Uh, 
But we, uh, again, wish you and Helen the very best, and it's been a pleasure to serve with you, and uh, we look forward to still seeing you around. It's not like that you're going anywhere, so uh, we want to present that to you. And uh, so with that being... One more thing before I go to my last meeting. You guys experience more than we do, but as far as commissioners, I, I cannot thank Michelle and Nicole enough for stepping up and taking care of the business of that office that they are in. They have suffered more anguish than anyone should have to endure. And the only reason they did that, in my mind, and if I'm wrong, don't correct me because I want to believe this. The only reason they did it is because the work needed to be done. Somebody had to do it. And there was more than once they were ready to walk out the door, and I know that's true. But they stuck around to care about this and I, I would have advised them to them walk out. So yeah. I, I actually I actually would have too, but I, I absolutely want to second that. Because these two have, particularly in the last couple of months, yep. have absolutely busted their tail yep. to make sure this outfit kept going. Commissioners couldn't have operated without them. Um, where we are. You know, they have just done tremendous amount of work in the last couple For the whole time they've been there, don't get me wrong, but particularly in this last couple of months. Um, our, uh, I, I I, I, I can't thank either one of you enough for, and Jim's absolutely right, um, you deserve a lot of credit and thanks for that. Uh, one of you is going upstairs into a new role uh, and we wish you all luck with that, but he's right, absolutely right, and that will soon, very soon, get better. Okay, anything else for the cause? So. I need to talk to you just one real quick thing right after. Sure. Anything else? Yeah.